given him. So with that being said, I'm going to stand out of the way uh, so that he can come and take his place. Say amen for Pastor Bland as he comes. Thank you, buddy. Good morning. Good morning. morning. We're going to give everybody the opportunity to get seated and to be comfortable. What's up, Fred? Uh, I would advise you to get comfortable because I am. <laughs> God saved me in 1980, and so I don't know how many years it is, almost 40 years. And in that time, I've done a lot of things that I didn't do before I got saved. A lot of wrong things, I mean, that I didn't. Cut that down just a little bit, please. Thank you. Just a little bit more. Okay, now I think we're, think we're there now. Now, to help some of you visitors to get your anxiety level down, uh, 11 o'clock, we're going to be gone. <laughs> that, I just helped about three or four folk right then. <laughs> you woke up. You ready? You ready now. You ready now. I, I just... Elder, pastor, they just, one thing that used to mess me up, they act like they had no sense of time, had nowhere to go. All right. I worked all week. Uh, I didn't plan to stay here eight hours. And so we just thank the Lord for these great men of God. Give the Lord a hand for all these men of God. A few, I'm, sure, I'm sure it is. Uh, if you're welcome to come to the stand if you, if you would desire. Uh, some I didn't know, I knew these two. Um, we're just thankful to the Lord. And being that I got saved in 1980, that, that I saw a lot of things, uh, uh, Pastor Elder. I saw a lot of things. Uh, most of y'all, y'all the Lacey family, y'all been around church a long time. <laughs> this is the 50th uh, uh, reunion. Uh, I came up under uh, Deacon Nathan Lacey out at Watson Temple Church of God in Christ. And he was a great man, and I even, a mother Lacey, I remember her. Um, a great man of God. And uh, during that period of time, you see a lot of things in church. And your theology changes. And you got a whole lot of folks just hanging around church. They're just hanging around church, and, 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 and nothing wrong with that. I want you to hang around. Maybe something might, you might hear something. You might hear something. So um, it has been a journey since 1980 up until this point. I'm kind of strange the way God works with me sometimes. I hadn't even taken a verse, but I want to just take my subject right now. Look at your neighbor. Look him right there in the eye and just tell him, say, look where? He brought me from. Thank you. Look, look. They didn't get it. Look at somebody else and tell them. Tell them, say, look where he brought me from. You see, Elder Lacey, to some folk, this ain't nothing. I tell them all the time. I know you look at me now and you say, well, ain't nothing to you. But I want you to know from where God brought me from. From where, thank you, Jesus. I ought to leave here skipping. You a happy Negro when you start skipping. Come on, man. Come on now. I ought to leave here skipping. You see, part of the arsenal that Satan has against a human being, Gene, is making them ungrateful. You see, it, no matter what you're going through, if you can find some gratitude to God, because you see, there's nobody breathing that God ain't been good to. If you yet breathing, then the Lord is good to you. Yes, yes, yes. He said, look where he brought me from. Yes. Brother Don Clark, you're aware that we've been in a series of messages uh, about a shift. How many know that God does not change, but he does move? Yes. I'll say that again. All right. That's good. That's good. He's the same God. That's good, oh my God, but he is a transformative God. Yeah. Mother Bray said there's no way that you can be, be with God and stay the same. 
And that's how come you have to leave some folks that you used to hang around. Folk like to say you acting funny, but you ain't acting funny. Say, baby, God done changed my address. Where I'm at, I'm just not comfortable no more. Uh -huh. if, it, if it had been left up to me, I would have stayed right where I was. Huh? But the old people used to say, some keep on worrying me. Some keep on that. I'm trying to stay with you. And so, and one thing about God, Jesus said, he that loved his mother, brother, sister, more than he does me is not worthy to be called my disciple. It's something walking with God. Let me tell you something. If you're going to walk with God, you got to make a choice. You got to make a decision. You can't walk with God and hang around. Come on, yeah, here's going to be some folk that used to love you that ain't going to be able to stand you. And it's not that you acting funny, not that you acting like you this and you acting like that, but the thing about it is, is that when God moves, you got to move because you're just not comfortable. <laughs> and folks always like to bring up where you used to be. <laughs> Uh, and said, baby, I can tell you better than you can tell me where I used to be. You don't know the full story. If you want to know about it, uh, I think I'm ready for my scripture now. Y'all ready to roll? Let's go to 1 Timothy All right. and the first chapter. Uh, 1 Timothy, the first chapter. Hmm. And the 12th verse. Look where he brought me from. You see, they give the devil, they give him hiccups right there. <laughs> because I ain't sitting up talking about my problems. I ain't sitting up talking about what I'm going through. I ain't sitting up talking about what nobody did to me. You see, I'm getting ready. I'm in a move, and that's a shift. I'm in a shift from trusting in self to having faith in God. <laughs> You, you, you see, when you in yourself, you in your feelings, and look what they did to me, and pastor borrowed money for me and didn't give it to me, and, and, and the, the church, when I needed something, the church turned against me. I'm all in myself, and I thought I wouldn't do that, and I found myself doing this right here and that, but when I move from trusting in myself, and I move over here to faith in God, you see, in the church, that sit up and talk about you all day, y'all ain't doing nothing no way. Come on, until y'all begin to look upon the fires of 10,000, until you begin to see the face of Jesus, until you, were, until you can visualize the nails in his hand, until you can see the blood that comes... The Bible says that when we were yet without strength, Paul says that we are not of those that have confidence in the flesh. When you come to the last house in the block, when you realize that you ain't nothing, there ain't nobody else nothing, but he is everything. When you realize that God, if he have to reach way down, he will lift you. Do I have two witnesses? <laughs> Do I have two witnesses that said, Pastor, I didn't ever think I'd get up out of that ditch. I didn't ever think I'd stop doing what I was doing. But Jesus came and saw about me. Yeah. Oh, I come here this morning, Pastor, to talk about Jesus. I didn't come talk about no man. Come on, Thank come you, on, Jesus. Y'all ready to roll? Let's roll. The Bible says, in the 12th verse, he says, and I thank Christ Jesus. Now, Lady Deborah, you know I left my watch. That's all right. I got my phone here. I can see what time it is. <clears throat> the 12th verse, look what, about what Paul says, talking to Timothy. Would to God that we would give young people a fighting chance. But what we do with young folks is, is that we just set them up to keep us up. I say that again. <laughs> We set them up to keep us up. The only thing I do with you as a young person is I put you in line to make sure my program is going on. <sighs> but Paul here, talking to Timothy, you see, what's missing is love. If you love somebody, then you put them before you. That's the reason, Ryan, I know ain't many people love me. You can make your mouth say anything. But it's only when you have the ability, Brother Habersham, to put my interest before your interest. 
You said, Pastor Bland, how did you first learn about love? I first learned about love from that woman that's sitting right there, Miss Etta Bland, Mother Etta Bland. You see, from my mama, I learned what it is for a person to walk around with holes in their slip, for a person to do without, for a person to go to work and with it to their hands and stuff, had cards in them, in order for me to go to school, in order for me to have what I didn't have. I learned from mama. What love is. Love is not all this patting you on your back and telling you how great you are and flattering you and, and what oh no no no. My mama talked to me like I had three tails. <laughs> Uh -huh. But you know what? No matter how she beat me, sometimes she beat me with an extension cord. If they didn't have a statute of limitation, they put her in jail right now. <laughs> but no matter how bad that she beat me, she would come, my brother, right afterward, and she'd put her arms around me. She said, baby, you make mama whoop you like that. Why you do that? Then she'd take me and give me a piece of candy. I knew that mama loved me. I had to learn how to love my daddy, but I knew my mama loved me. Come on, preacher. What's missing now is the love of God. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Ain't nothing like love. <laughs> you can't fuss at folk long enough to make them act right. <laughs> you can't down folk long enough to make them act right. <laughs> but God told Israel, he said, with love and kindness have I drawn you. <laughs> you know you didn't get saved because nobody was telling you you were going to hell. <laughs> you got saved because you felt the love of God. <laughs> you saw the bleeding side of Calvary. <laughs> you saw how Jesus marched up God God was healed yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> despite how you had acted the Bible says when we were yet without strength Christ died for the ungodly then he goes on to say seldom for a righteous man would one die <laughs> but he died for God haters <laughs> He died for, I'm going to tell you what, I used to get so drunk, drunk folk didn't want to be around me. But he died for me. The songwriter says that he looked beyond my fault. Hold this for a minute, please. He looked beyond my fault. Oh, my God. And so... He saw my need. You can sit around and wonder if you saved or not. I know I'm saved. I know he saved me. I know his blood is sufficient. I know he didn't die in vain. I know that every drop of blood that he shed bought my redemption. Thank you, Jesus. Look where he brought me from. <laughs> You know, sometimes you, sometimes, Pastor, you get caught up in your present situation. Sometimes, I know, I, I know about 99, y'all don't go through nothing, but it's about three or four of us that we going through living hell. It's about three or four of us that folks that we help won't even help us. Come on, come on now. And we become despondent about our problems and everything. But you know what? Elder Lacey, if I can just stop for a minute All right. and look where he brought me from. Look where he brought me from. <laughs> I never thought I'd drive the kind of cars I've driven. <laughs> I never thought I'd live in the kind of house I've lived in. <laughs> I never thought I'd get to go on trips like I went on. <laughs> I never thought we'd get a chance to eat at restaurants like we eat it. <laughs> but you see, the devil can't stop God from blessing you. <laughs> what he tries to do, watch out, little baby, I'm sorry, this is what I do. You move right here. I have to move it. Let me tell you something. This is what the day I can do when I'm the pastor. <laughs> Look, let me tell you something. <laughs> This, this, this is what he does. He can't stop God from blessing you. He can't stop your child from getting in that school. He can't stop you from getting that raise on your job. But mother, what he does is he makes it where you don't appreciate it. He makes it where you... Think about when you first got saved. Think about all somebody had to do was say Jesus. They said Jesus and you were cut out running. <laughs> you said they said Jesus. Now you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars living in a palatial home, driving from a Lexus to a BMW and you come to church and sit on your hands. Come on preacher, come on preacher. But if you can just 
pause for a minute. Don't look where he brought me from. See, that's what the problem is. You too busy looking at me. But look where he brought you from. Look where he brought you from. Uh, look where he brought you from. And it didn't cost you nothing. And the thing that really make you want to shout, Mother Bland, is he didn't wait till you was worthy of it. He didn't work till you deserved it. His grace and his mercy. His grace and his mercy. His grace and his mercy. Yeah. David said he's been following me all the days. Sometime, Nikki, I was in the dope house. <laughs> Looked like I saw something the other folk didn't see. And they said, oh, they called me preacher in the dope, dope house. <laughs> they said, preacher, you just done got too high. <laughs> but today, you know what I believe that was, my brother? <laughs> I believe that was the angels of God. <laughs> that was, oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I think that when I was in the dope house, I think when I was out of the will of God, I think when I wasn't thinking about God, he was thinking about me. And when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna help him. You're gonna help Let me tell you something. When I was working at Coca-Cola, and I done worked there for all them week, all them hours, and I'm waiting on my little money. <laughs> and they got my check, brother, sitting in the desk. <laughs> and I'm walking around all day, and y'all got my check right there. I don't know what you're waiting on. <laughs> and when he finally gave it to me, I might have said, you know what, thank you. But I didn't really mean it. And you know why I didn't mean it? Because I had worked for it. But I'm, thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. When I really think about what God had done for me and how I didn't deserve nothing that he did for me, how did I actually deserve to be put away? But he brought me in. Thank you, Jesus. I ain't going to bother y'all much longer. I'm almost through. Look what he says in verse 12. He says, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer. You see, you know how when I know that I've been delivered, when I can tell anybody. See, if you still shame and you still shh, shh, don't, don't, shh, shh, don't bring that up, don't, shh, shh, don't, don't, don't. But pastor, when you can tell anybody, Paul stands and he tells Timothy, you see, when you've been delivered, you ain't got to lie. When you've been delivered, you can talk about what I was. I, I was but God. Even when I was in that state, God didn't look down on me. He said, was a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. Look what the Bible says. He says, but I obtained mercy. Mercy. You see, grace is when I get something I don't deserve. But mercy is when I get something I don't get something that I do deserve. When I realize how God mother has passed over me. Y'all a blessed family. You're a blessed family. But it don't do you no good if you don't appreciate it. It don't do you no good. If you, if you don't appreciate what God have done for you, he might as well have done it for a total frog. I know what I say, a total frog. <laughs> you, got a, you got a couple over here that not saying they 78 years old. That would be a blessing within itself. But they've been married seven, eight years. You ought to tell the Lord, thank you. You ought to tell God, thank you. You ought to tell God, thank you. Let me tell you something. You can bet you blessed when you can thank God for other folk blessing. When you can thank God for what he done for somebody else. That wasn't them, that was God. He said, what I did, I did it ignorantly. And I, I got mercy. Look what the Bible says in verse 14. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding bonded with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Yeah. 
of whom I am chief. Now that word chief in the Greek, I'm not gonna go too deep in it, but it's protos, which means I am first. You see, before Paul, a man had to do his best to keep the law in order to be made right with God. Because the law was a schoolmaster to keep them until Christ came. Now when Christ came, he was born of a woman under the law, but when Christ came and he shed his blood, remember when he sat there with them at the Last Supper and he told them, he said, this is the blood that purchases the new covenant. You see, the old covenant was based upon man. It was based upon your ability. Have you lived long enough to know that you can't count on you? Is there anybody here that's been able to do everything they said they were going to do? Is there anybody here that's been able to stand up to everything they said they were going to stand up to? Well, the old covenant was based on you being able to do what you said you were going to do. Marlon, that was some things that I promise you I wanted to do so bad. I can remember in 1988, after I had did what y'all call backslide, in 1988 being out in the projects in Little Rock, Arkansas, and I got a handful of crack rocks in my hand. Preach it, preach, you know, call to God, got an elder license, and I got a handful of rocks in my hand. And my children are about 10 miles away. It's January, it's cold. And I'm looking at them rocks, and I got to chew between them rocks and go in and pick my child up. And I got crying because I knew my children wasn't going to get picked up. That I look where he brought me from. Y'all going to tell you something. I cried because I couldn't. I can remember being in Fort Bend in Georgia, an uh, officer there in Fort Bend in Georgia and I can remember riding from I think it was Victory Land it was a, a dog track I'm at the dog track and I'm, I'm drunk as I can be and I'm driving 85 miles an hour on Interstate 85 and I, I reach over and I get one of my tapes from when I used to preach and I put the tape in elder and in the tape I'm preaching on the anointing of God I'm preaching the mind of Christ and I cry and I said God I got to get back some kind of way but I want you to know something. If you've never been in the ditch, you don't know God's power. If you've never been down, you don't know how God can bring you up. If you ain't never been low, you don't know how he'll bring you up. But if you've ever been down, you know the power of You know what God can do. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. You're going to help somebody. You're going to help somebody. Clap your hands for the Lord.